So what, what I wanted to do next is a lot of people think this is all getting way too slow and way too, uh, I don't know, it's too quiet for some people, I understand that. When you, have, when you work kind of all day long and you don't have to make a big fuss about it, uh, some, that seems to bother some people. So what I wanted to do next, we'll actually bring these heifers through and we'll catch them. And I'm, this is a little shorter lead up than I'd like to have to make, really talk about uh, getting flow started, but we'll make it work. Because there's some things we can do to get these cattle to step into that chute that'll cut down a lot of hot shot use. Most of the hot shot use I see on the cow-calf operation is right here. And y'all notice those heifers are wanting to balk coming right here. So what can we do to change that? What's making them water balk and what can we do to change it? They're not going to go, I use this analogy a lot, it may be a bad one. Have y'all seen the video where people hold a sheet up? On well, Facebook there's a bunch of these around. And they have their dog on the other side and they drop the sheet and they're all, they run off and the dog kind of freaks out. Those are kind of funny. But you think about that dog freaks out because there's supposed to be somebody there. Well, if you run a cow in a chute and you've got a solid slider or something on the back of it, and the next time that chute opens, there's nothing in it, and they just saw their buddy walk in it, what does that signal to them? But if we'll crack this gate, or if they can see through it, as that animal leaves, we create draw that gets this one to follow the next one on. 90% of the hot shot use I see on a cow-calf op operations right here it's because we're not doing that one thing right. We let that cow go and then we crack the back gate. You'd be amazed how much difference that'll make. So that's what we want to kind of demonstrate. And, and by this design, I can run it while he's running the head gate. And so as I open this gate, I can step down this one's side and draw him forward. And so he got to draw that one. I'm going down the side, just like we've taught him to do everything else we've done. And we create our draw and flow into the chute. Okay, so part of the job then on this, on the head gate guy, uh, those of you on the outside out there, they might want to close that gate. These panels are no longer tied together right here, so just FYI, right in front of the chute. <laughs> we, we took a panel out and they don't match up now. There you go. I just thought about that. So now part of this is also, these heifers are really gonna wanna, they've always wanted to go outside this palpation door. They get right there. I widened the bottom a little bit. We always like to keep it narrow so we can squeeze them better. I personally like it to be wider so they're comfortable with their feet wide apart. They'll stand better. If they're standing there narrow footed, they can't get their balance. And then they go to fighting the shooting more, so then we have to squeeze them. So I don't normally tighten the bottom end, and you notice some of these heifers were jumping out of this chute to start with. Anything that V's at the bottom too much will create a, that jump effect as the animal leaves the chute. And so that's where you slip and fall and all that kind of stuff can come into play. So the other thing when working the head gate, this one has a self catch on it. And probably if I were running this chute at home, I'd stand right about here and not use a self-catch if there were two of you. So as that animal comes, you can step down their side and catch their head. Because if you, most of the time our self-catch is not set wide enough that they want to come through it. Now if I get one that balks, I'll set the self-catch and then I'll work them up. But if I've got somebody helping me, somebody can stand right here, they really can't see if you stand sideways. But as they come, you can step around and, and pull that handle. So there's a lot of things to think about in that process. Now, I'm changing the way he normally works it. If he does it that way, he's probably going to miss some. He's going to blame me, which is fine, too. Uh, that, in nearly any chute, there's a dead spot right up here by the head gate because the, the front of the head gate's solid that you can actually hide behind. And so you don't create that pushback. All right, we'll, we'll get some in the alleyway again. We'll run them through our box and see what we can figure out here.
And so I've got to get them all lined up again. I'm just going to take about half of them down here, probably four of them, five of them maybe. And I'm going to go ahead and go in the box. Oh, I can't do that. Didn't leave my box open. Sometimes paying attention is not my strongest suit. All right. Now, once again, I don't want to go behind them. I want them to learn to come out of there. We can probably fit three, maybe four, in that chute and that lead up. We'll see. Let me get some behind her and we'll see what happens. Now see, when you do put somebody in the front, that changes the dynamic, doesn't it? Now, I would like for her to pull her head around there. Now, I'm on the wrong side. She won't turn loose of her, this eye. So I'm gonna do something here. All right, just in the interest of these heifers that are in here. All right, now we do our processing on that one. I can get this one ready to go. So as soon as he lets that one go, and then this head gate, he's got to swing the end to the inside. So I'm going to wait till she steps forward. He can step down her side. Now I will tell you, I, on my WW shoot, I'll go ahead and swing my gate all the way to the inside before I let one out. And that way I am ready, and that's one good thing about a WW shoot, that he's now ready to catch that one. All right, so as he, let, he does the processing to get that one ready to go. We can go pretty fast, okay? So it's not all that hard to get this done. Now I do want to show you something here. This is kind of interesting. You notice we just now set that thing. Being that close to the back, it may be somewhat of a problem. So most of the time I'd rather have a slider. I think I heard Temple say that as well. Well, I like this. A lot of new, nice new sliding gates you can buy. And then my humane handling book, this nice sliding gates. But the FFA students can go in welding class. I yep. actually get hate backstops. I've got backstops in my book, but I'd rather have a slide gate, rather than mess around with that thing. As we said before, Milner section is single. I don't mind those being, being up a little further in the chute, but watch what it does to my flow coming out of here. Oh, she went ahead and took it. I like it. I know they are kind of balking a little bit, and it sticks. But if we're getting our system to where it works right, why don't you go ahead and set yourself catch and we'll talk about doing it that way. So if I'm here and I want this heifer to come forward, I can open my gate, step down her side, get her to move forward. If that's not wide enough, then if you're working by yourself, then you can do it that way. If she takes it the first time, that's fine. But if not, You've got the ability to, to get her in the chute and then work her up a little more. You know, he's really watching me to make sure I don't let one in on you. <laughs> he's ready. Which is, you're operating the chute, you better. Now, she'd rather just not do that, but. All right, now this is a great point. I'm gonna let her go as well. All the discussion on solid sides and open sides. Where would we really be beneficial to have a solid side right now? One place I think would be really beneficial is the back gate on the blood box. The back gate, stop them going back. No, actually here in the front, we need to have it open so they see a place to go. And as I mentioned this morning, you don't want the vehicles and the dogs there for them to see that. But the back crowd gate, any crowd gate designs, one thing I think everybody agrees should be solid. The other thing that, you notice all these heifers are trying to go to their herd mates. They want to stick their head out and go that way. 
So to me, the other side of this working alley, if it was solid sheeted, would actually help our flow. Yes, it would, definitely. And this so, gets back to what I said about outer perimeters, covering the outer perimeter. And that would be the outer perimeter because you're working this side. And, and I like these panels to probably be half sheeted. I would agree with that. And then you don't have a leg getting out or a head coming out through the panel if they do stick their head down. But these work. I mean, it just makes it a little more difficult sometimes if they're stopping to look at their herd mates on the other side. So there's things you can do from a design standpoint that makes this a whole lot easier. Now the whole principle, the outer perimeter part of it, the most important part to cover. All right. All right. Any, any anybody have any questions about this? This gets easy when you create this draw and flow. There was absolutely no pushing these cattle through there. Now the first time, how hesitant were they? Who pushed them through the first time? Their herd mates, right? So they stayed behind them like, Sally, get your butt out of the way. And so they actually trained themselves to go through there. And so if we set them upright and we create that push and that draw through there, that sticks with them a lifetime. Until we start doing something stupid up here, they're gonna keep coming through. A needle doesn't hurt a cow. I'm sure it don't feel good, but how many times you seen a cow run through a thorny thicket? They just laugh at you coming out the other side. A needle's not a big deal to a cow. We are a big deal to a cow. And the pressure that we put on them back here, screaming and hollering and hot shotting them up here, and I see really good cowboys out in the pastures. And for some reason, when we get to the crowds, we lose our minds sometimes. They can be really quiet out in the pasture, and they close the gate, and everybody grabs a stick or a hot shot and goes to screaming and hollering. Absolutely never do that in any other setting. Well, just quit it. Figure out how to, and I do think we made a mistake in this industry. We started telling everybody how, don't use a hot shot. But we didn't tell them how to make cows work without using a hot shot. That was a mistake on the industry's part. Here we're telling you how you can get it done without a hot shot. I personally think there should be a hot shot in his pickup, probably. So if something goes down and it's choking here, I can use it to try to save their life. And I would totally agree with that. And the, other th the thing though, don't let anybody carry it around. Because I know how you are. You're going to see how long that blue spark is coming off the end of it. Every pipe, you find a rusty spot, see if it'll spark coming off there. Run it between somebody's leg. Shock the dog. And this poor cow behind the shoe is going to get it because you got it there and why not? So just don't let anybody carry one around. If you get it out of the truck, hang it over on the side fence somewhere. So when this all goes to Hades, you've got to walk over there to get it. That release of pressure will normally fix what you went to go get the hot shot to fix. Because what happens if one of them gets down here? We want to fix it. We get in there and we go to whopping one of them on the head trying to make her get up. The best thing to do is to back off. That's not our mentality. We want to fix it. We want to make it get better. Just walk off. Go get a glass of water. Unless she's choking, she'll get up. But anything else on this, we think, well, this is simple. And we make this really hard sometimes. Now here's something else. We normally have too many people here. When you hire a crew to gather cows, I don't know how many you have to hire to get your pastures together. But when you get there, can you let half of them go? Can you let two thirds of them go? If you can, do it, okay? Keep your crew there that's going to do this right. Because if you're paying a man, a man a day's wages, he's going to want to help. He's not going to stand over here out of the way, is he? He's going to be right in the middle of the business because we're paying him, he wants to help. That puts him in the way. So very often, get down to about five people max processing cows. Now you may rotate people in and out, but have them go off and do something else, come back later, and, and spell somebody. But don't have everybody standing around the processing area. Because I guarantee you some of them are going to be in the way. All right.